Welcome back, and uh, we're talking with um, Brother James Fernanda of Gambia and Young, uh, um, um, Brother Christoph from Adelaide, talking about the history of those two distinguished uh, towns, very little known by the wider community, along with Fox Hill and Grandstown and Bain Town, they are the five original slave towns on New Providence. Now, over the years, the five towns moved away a little from their history, from the celebration of, of Emancipation Day. Indeed, Fox Hill is the only one that has consistently, over the decades, uh, maintain their link to uh, Emancipation Day celebrations. However, Gambia has done it and is doing it. You all have a big time coming up this year. And um, Adelaide has done it. Baintown, Grandstown, we're the fellas in the back. <laughs> we're just trying to catch up with you all. But unfortunately, you know, uh, we were not encouraged, the descendants of the enslaved Africans were not encouraged to even research their history. And so uh, after a little while, it just receded into the darkness of history. But there are some of us who are trying to bring it back because we believe that when you, when you know your history, you will know who you are not who they say you are. When you know who you are, you will gain your, that pride and that dignity that is necessary for you to really progress. And when you gain that pride and that dignity as individuals and as a nation, we will ascend to the heights because there are still a lot of, of persons who are descended from the African slaves who feel a sense of shame they feel a sense of inadequacy. They go to great lengths to look like, sound like, behave like the very people who enslaved them. To me, that says that they lack the knowledge and the confidence and the self-respect of their heritage. Fox Hill is a model that we should all uh, follow. And they're going to turn Nassau upside down in the next week with their activities. What are you all having in Gambia? Well, Gambia Day we usually have uh, different sports. We have cookouts. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, we have, you know, a church service. Yes, well. Uh, we have always uh, endeavored to do our best to keep uh, that memorial alive. We weren't able to continue as we used to mm -hmm. because Fox Hill, I mean, uh, Gambia was the main, used to be the main event. Mm -hmm. We had people from, from uh, Adelaide, Delaport, Bain Town, Grandstown, oh, and Fox down. Hill. They would, on Gambia, they, they, everyone would come to Gambia. Mm -hmm. And when it was Fox Hill, they, everybody would go to Fox Hill. Right. But uh, some sort of how we had little problems here where uh, uh, Fox Hill uh, sort of tried to take over the greater part of our uh, uh, celebration because they start during the same time we have our start our celebration and then they end up back on their part of the, of mm -hmm. the uh, celebration on uh, Fox the Day. Well, you know, a lot of that uh, is because the more activities that you introduce, the more the calendar is crowded. Because we're experiencing that now, because Fox Hill has an extended, an extensive calendar of activities. Well, you know, one of the things is that uh, the representative, representative of that uh, area 
has done a tremendous job. He stick with his people, he worked with them, and he helped them to build. Mm -hmm. Like for Adelaide and Gambia, we started off with pretty good support, and then uh, Gambia was more or less left, you know, to take care of themselves. It could be, of course, that, um, what's the population of Gambia? About 700, I think. Approximately. Seven, what's the population of Adelaide? About 400. Yeah. That, I think, is a part of the problem. It is very difficult for small groups of people anywhere to really sustain any significant projects because it takes money. Well, you know, Gambia, the constituency of Gambia, was mainly. Uh, from the western end of the island and it went all the way to a uh, part of uh, Chipping Arm. Yes, I remember. Because if you would take into consideration the Gambia, constitu the Gambia house is on Farrington Road. Yes, that was a part of the constituency. So all, and uh, you know, we have heard now up to date, let's say four prime ministers. Mm -hmm. and. If you were to look at the boundary uh, of where Gambia constituency went, you would see that the four prime ministers that we had lived in Gambia. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, very little has been done for the village of Gambia. Yeah. Well, you see, <coughs> I hear you, and that's a part of the problem. The political directorate have been naming these constituencies after these important towns. I am not a fan of that because it creates a confusion. It does, very it creates much. creates confusion because you're talking about Gambia, which occupied a vast part of Western New Providence, but within that constituency boundaries were all different towns and people and, and levels of economics and culture and color and race. That is why we cannot rely on the member of parliament or the political directorate. We cannot. Why? Because each election cycle, the boundaries change. Yep. And yes. the, the, the MP is going to follow the boundary lines because that's in his or her interest. The people of these towns, and that's the point, the people of these towns must take responsibility and assume the leadership. Now, in Fox Hill, while the um, immediate past member of parliament did uh, represent the cultural aspect of Fox Hill very well, but Fox Hill Day was long entrenched, long before he became the MP, because as a boy, yes. I remember yes going to Fox Hill Day on Emancipation Day and enjoying myself. Doesn't matter who the member of parliament was because since that time, there would have been at least six, eight different members of parliament. parliament yes. And Fox Hill uh, activities around Emancipation Day remain. Now, it could be greatly supported by whoever is in power now. And that's what we are trying to do. That's why we are here. We're saying to these towns, do not rely on the political directorate. We are having a bit of that problem in Bain Grandstown now because the constituency is named Bain and Grandstown. We wish they would change that because the geographic, historic, cultural uh, uh, boundary of Bain Town and Grandstown bears little relationship to the political boundaries. For example, currently a huge swath of Grantstown is located in Centerville and a huge part of, of um, Fort Charlotte is now called Bain Grantstown. Well, so the, 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 the electorates, they cut the boundary to suit their own purposes. Well, that's our point. So we ignore political boundaries. When we have events, currently there are two persons representing 
portions of Bay and Grandstown. That's the MP for Senneville and the MP for Bay and Grandstown. They represent a portion of Bay and Grandstown. They don't speak for the cultural, historic, uh, uh, geographic Bay and Grandstown. They speak for the political Bay and Grandstown. Yes. Yes. All right? Yes. So that's what we, and by we I mean all of us, have to do. Don't look to them. They should be able to support us. But we have to do, and I admire Fox Hill. I admire them over the years because they did not rely. Doesn't matter whether the member of parliament was from one organization or the other, they continued to recognize um, Emancipation Day. And as we're talking about Fox Hill, Fox Hill has a pretty strong future. Unlike Bain Town, they are made up of a larger number of tribes. Fox Hill original residents were drawn from the Yoruba tribes, the Nangos, the Congos, the Igbos, all of them. Yes. Whereas in Bain Town, it was primarily the Yoruba. We had some, we had some Congos, but the Yoruba, as we all know, were the elites in uh, uh, the, the tribes from Africa. And when persons of lesser pedigree, so to speak, from tribes of lesser pedigree, came to Bay in town, the Yoruba sent them elsewhere because they wanted to maintain their control and dominance Supremacy. in, 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 in Bay in town. But the people must take responsibility. The people must take responsibility. And we're going to talk about that a little as we come back because that is why the five towns are collaborating on activities this year. The five towns, because we must help each other. We must work together. As you know, we've been down in, in Gambia doing some way, trying to revive and encourage and support the people. We're gonna be doing the same thing now. As a matter of fact, we've already made contact with folks down there. Don't go, we're gonna be right back and we're going to talk about the importance of our people, particularly our young people, knowing their history. We'll be right back. Only love can save us now. Only love. 